Hello, everybody. I thought I would just come on here and give a, you know, brief breakdown and critical analysis of the new Alien movie, not from an esoteric level or the esoteric significance and the symbolism, but just as a film buff, just as a person who likes to watch cinema. So one of the first things that I noticed about the film was that it had this weird filter over top of it that just really muddied the picture a lot. And I see that with a lot of new films and it just... I just don't like it. I don't like the feel that I get from it. It just makes the film look really dirty. And I mean, yes, the older films were dark, but the way that they use their sharpness, you know, and contrast would really bring out the details about everything in the movie. Um, whereas this film, the, the details kind of just fall away because nothing really pops because of this weird brown filter that they have over top of it. Um, the other thing that is kind of dualistic for me, so point two, I, I have 10 points here that I was going to go over. Uh, point two was that there uh, is too many Easter eggs. Although I respect the throwbacks, the homages for the earlier films, and I can see that they potentially were trying to thank the, uh, the original films and try to give credit where it is due for Alien and Aliens. And a little bit of Alien 3 as well. I mean, even in the trailer, you saw the spinning fans. That was a big Easter egg back to Alien 3. Um, but the problem is, is that this movie has no identity of its own because of that. It's just taking uh, from better directors and better films and rehashing them and reusing them as if it makes a better movie. I don't know. I really didn't like the feel of this where you could see that they're taking these scenes and they're changing them uh, and they're, you know, in reference to the earlier films. And this tends to be a very big thing that's happening in, in cinema where it's like all these Easter eggs to earlier classics. Like that's going to make your film somehow a masterpiece because you're rehashing older things. We've already seen this stuff before. Like if I want to see it, I'd rather just go to the original version, which is done and performed way better than this film. Uh, so that's my criticism, though I appreciate some Easter eggs and I appreciate homages towards older films. Absolutely. But when your film struggles to find its own identity because it can't break free from just using scenes from the original films, then um, you have a big issue there. Uh, the third thing is that there's real, and this kind of connects to this, there's no real good novelty ideas. So um, there's there's only kind of bad ones, right? Uh, meaning they, did, they didn't bring anything new to the table. Um, and the things that they did bring to the table that was supposed to advance the narrative, the story and things like this, just really fell short, fell right on its face, right? So one example would be like, um, let me think here. Uh, the aliens being scared of guns and somehow learning that guns are now dangerous to them. This was never a thing in any of the other aliens movies. They just ran at them. I mean, think about aliens, you know, the second movie in the franchise. Uh, and you have all the Marines locked in the med bay and you have hundreds of aliens just running at them, right? I mean, they're just flooding in, right? I don't know exactly how many, but quite a few freaking aliens were just flooding in after them. They didn't care about the guns. Okay, if you want to go with the idea that there's some kind of genetic memory and stuff like this, well, this takes place, uh, you know, in between alien and alien. So it's like, um, wait a minute. And oh, yeah, uh, there wasn't pulse rifles in alien, that was an alien. So if this took place in the middle, then they've never experienced pulse rifles, unless you're like going to the lore of the comics and the books. Um, then, and I think they had in there, um, and that's the reference in like aliens where they're talking about bug hunts. Uh, it's a throwback to the earlier comics though, in the, the canon, you know, series, the franchise, the movie, the cinema, the films, they did not, you know, have any, <clears throat> excuse me, have any experience with that. Um, they also had this idea that now the face huggers are attracted to heat, which is a kind of cool idea, right? But really the only thing it was there for was for another, you know, chase scene, which we see in all these horror movies. There's no like real, um, on the edge of your seat type of scene anymore. And the, the subliminals are not there, right? So, 
uh, it seems like they're trying to take from the earlier movies, but they don't really understand the the sophistication of the cinema expression and cinema language with subliminals, you know, uh, for example, the doors and the hallways of Alien 1 and, and the, uh, the steam and the hissing from Aliens 2 being in a nuclear power plant all are to invoke <clears throat> this psychological um, expression and to blur the lines between, you know, whether you think it's the alien or not, like the hissing sounds like the alien from the, from, you know, the nuclear power plant. So it, it, it just doesn't really sit well with me. Um, uh, I guess the acid blood scene was kind of cool. I, I thought it was kind of interesting <clears throat> and they could have done it a bit better. Uh, but that's the only real scene you get any real gunplay in. And it just, I don't know, it kind of just fell on its face for me. So it doesn't really have any originality. I guess the acid scene was uh, kind of original. Um, and, you know, I, I just don't like the way that they displayed and went about uh, trying to bring in new novelties, like the, the face huggers being attracted to, you know, heat now, which is kind of a cool thing. But then it's like you have to retcon all this stuff. And then it doesn't make sense because in Aliens, in the second movie in the franchise, um, they're literally in a nuclear plant and and they have no sense of heat signature or heat tracing or heat seeking at all because this nuclear facility is so hot they literally say that in the movie so it's like the directors and the writers and stuff just to and producers just totally ignored the lore from the movies like i mean it's in the second movie itself like they talk about the heat uh in the movie when they're looking at the maps and stuff and how hot it is down um underneath the nuclear plant or whatever uh, the set designs seem like this is the fourth point. The set, the set designs seem like they were um, inspired by Isolation, the video game, which was a really good video game, and it does. I think it even does better than the um, than the uh, the movies themselves at bringing out the subliminal expression. You know, um, so the subliminal symbolism that invokes certain types of psychology and psychological expressions for us. I think it did better. And you can see that they're kind of like copy and pasting some of these scenes and some of them were kind of cool, right? Um, and, and that was, you know, I think it's okay, but it falls, again, flat on its face because guess what? Um, they just don't do it well. It's just not done good. It's just not at all done good. And it's not really present. It's only present in some scenes. So they don't really understand the earlier set expression for the cinematography and for the way that sets really work with the subliminal in imagery. Uh, number five is it just seems like we already know this, that we have this huge checkbox for bringing all inclusive people, right? And they have these stereotypical characters and all the characters just, just have no, no substance to them. They have no fucking substance to them. Um, so they have to make sure that they're all inclusive, right? I think the only character in the in the film uh, that was actually good was the the android. And I don't know the actor's name. Uh, and I can't even remember the character's name, actually. I can't remember any of the characters' names because none of them stood out to me, honestly. Uh, honestly, the only thing I cared about was seeing them dying like some gruesome death, right? So you have this checkbox, you know, uh, inclusiveness, which is fine if you want to be inclusive. That's great. Like, bring people in. But don't, like, just fill out these forms and make them all structured as if, you know, like, they have to have certain accents and they have to be certain sexualities uh, when they are this certain gender or certain race or things like this. It's it's pretty, it's pretty bad, you know. And then we see the repetition of the black victim as well, which, you know, um, synchronistically and symbolically has a good metaphor when it comes to uh, the polarities of energy when you understand it. But on the face, the exoteric level, this is really just a political, <clears throat> excuse me, a political piece that they're putting in, right? So this is just about the political agenda that they're trying to shove down your throat again, right? So there's no good character development. Um, Number six, this was supposed to be a return to form with getting back to practical effects. And it does seem like they had some good practical effects. I'm not trying to say the movie is absolutely bad. Um, 
but it seems like it towards the end it starts out pretty good and then towards the end it's just like a bunch of cgi right so a lot of the practical effects died out and then you have um ian holmes right uh the guy who played ash in alien one and i felt like they did him a disservice though his character play was played very well the cgi just was horrible um and he was one of the best characters of the entire alien franchise so uh, another thing about this is it just seems like there's no realism in any, of the, in any of this. I don't like how these films nowadays are, you know, these crazy kind of parkour movies, which I, which I've heard a lot of people complain about, right? So there's no real realistic movements, and this kind of comes from uh, the Al or the uh, Matrix uh, Revolution in 1999 when they put in the whatever it was called, um, the the gun stuff right i can't remember what it was called but um yeah i mean obviously it's okay to suspend realism but the whole point of aliens is it's supposed to be more realistic it's supposed to be grounded as far as like you're not superhumans you can't just take like crazy fucking hits and then get up from that even the even the uh protagonists of the film uh get beat up and damaged and i mean this protagonist kind of gets beat up i never really felt like this protagonist was at any kind of risk um in any way shape or form and honestly a lot of the characters i knew exactly how they were going to die like the girl who was pregnant right off the bat already knew that she was going to get impregnated um and you know the black goo thing that was kind of cool uh, i was interested in that and i and i was like oh wow you know this is going to be an interesting thing but then the end just didn't pay off. The creature that they, des or whoever designed this creature at the end, which it's supposed to resemble the the um, architects or whatever they're called, you know, um, the creators, you know, the big freaking blue gray skin guys. Um, I can't remember what their names are, but uh, I just didn't like the, the, the monster design. It's nothing like the alien creature. I mean, you think about it, there's a few, you know, monster designs in cinema history that will always stand out. And the alien is one of them. Predator is one of them. You know, Terminator is another one. If you want to throw them in that category, I mean, there's a bunch prior to that, but those ones really freaking stand out, you know, and the alien design was inspired by HR Giger's work, obviously, which is, why it stood out so so much so excessive cgi not really good practical effects uh too much like unrealistic movements and parkour and which i don't think a lot of people want to see really um so the the seventh thing you know that was six the seventh thing was the black goo it had potential but the des design was awful uh the the head didn't have any room for the actual tongue you know uh you know the head was flat it just it made no practical sense for the tongue to be like coming up and out and then that's why that alien's head's so long like a big phallus you know is so it can cock the tongue back and then you know strike like a snake um the, number eight it had a good start which i kind of mentioned this earlier but it just falls short later on like i was really excited at the beginning and i really kind of like what they were going with at the beginning and then it just kind of, you know, falls straight on his face. And right off the bat at the beginning, and I didn't think about this until later, which is that the, you know, of course the android gets uh, gets picked on by all the white kids. And he's picked on by the one guy who's supposed to represent Hudson from Aliens. He's a com complete ripoff of Hudson. And Hudson, the actor, Bill, Bill whatever, uh, did, did a way better job at playing that character and he wasn't a complete ass like that you know like he was an ass but he wasn't an ass like that you know he wasn't racist um and it was very clear that that's what they were trying to push forward with this attack on the 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 synthetic the android you know um so yeah not a return to form uh the impregnation sequence this was number 10 uh, and this goes along with my last statement, which is that, they, and this is like the entire thing, they completely, it, they completely ignored the lore of the earlier films, right? Just completely ignored it. And the impregnation scene with the Asian lady um, was just really short. Like when you watch Alien and that impregnation scene, you know, like that, the uh, time it takes for gestation, 
that is an intense scene and it's not because of the the timing necessarily that's not it but it's because of the acting because th it seems so real and this is uh, the major thing is that these actors just suck nowadays like get some good actors you know these actors don't know what the hell they're doing there's no sense I don't feel any realism from it. I don't feel emotionally connected to it. And when I walked out of the theater, I wasn't really excited. I actually was pretty let down. Like I, I haven't been to a movie in a long time in the theaters and me and my girlfriend went and I walked out and I was like, the, the best part about the movie to me was, you know, well, at first it was seeing a new aliens film. Cause I'm an alien, you know, uh, fanboy, you could say alien nerd. Um, but it was just spending time with my girlfriend. That was the best thing. Um, you know, I'm, I almost could have just been doing something different, honestly, but it was well worth to spend time with her, but the movie itself just, you know, it just wasn't very good. Um, so I recommend not watching it until it comes out on like DVD or Blu-ray or on the streaming service or whatever, and then watch it, give it your, you know, your thoughts. Now, esoterically i already uploaded a video about the esotericism in this film there's a lot of good esotericism in the film but you can find that in the most shitty movies you know it doesn't mean it's a great cinema uh, you know expression it doesn't mean there's great cinematography it doesn't mean there's great acting it just means that the symbolism was pretty well done and the underlying story you know about remus and romulus they had a great premise and they could have really ran with that and really taken it to new levels with that. But they kind of just, I don't know, they just, you know, went down the checkbox, like I said, with the horror trip. So that's all I got to say. Uh, thanks for tuning in for this brief criticism of the movie. Maybe I'll do some more stuff like this. If you guys enjoy that, um, let me know. And I'll see you here soon with some more content. I'm going to be doing a full uh, Aliens breakdown from my essay. Uh, in the near future, and then I'm going to be releasing episode 3, uh, well technically it's episode 2.1 about symbolism, the use and subversive use of symbolism from Beyond the Forbidden Veil series. And I hope everybody stays free and stays strong and, you know, just stay empowered in these turbulent times. And I'll see you next time.